Lions TV, this is your Wednesday club video. It's going to be a long one. We're going to look back at Bank Holiday Monday's defeats away to Rotherham. We're also going to look ahead to another long ass trip coming up this Saturday away at Huddersfield. And that one is absolutely massive now. And we're also going to cram in the six to go content all into one long formatted video for a few reasons. You know, I've got a few bits to do this week for one. And also tomorrow, I want to try and stream the under-18s in their semi-final away at least. If it's streamable, then I will watch that and we can have a chat about the ongoings with a first team as well. Also, just point out, I've got the earphones in. Um, this is a new um, man cave and I've managed to sort the cameras out. I've managed to sort the lighting out, but it's extremely, extremely echoey in here. And no matter what I do, I can't seem to sort out the audio. So for now, this is the best I can do and, and maybe next week or the end of the season, because we've got midweek game next week as well. Of course, I'll, uh, I'll take a better look at it and get it sorted. But let's kick off the show and wind it back to Monday and start out with a start at 11 that Neil Harris picked to start the match. And so the gaffer made two changes from the team that drew 1-1 against West Bromwich Albion on Good Friday. Of course, Joe Bryan dropped out. He limped off injured in that game. He was replaced by Murray Wallace. And Billy Mitchell was rested and replaced by Casper. D. Ballon Dior. I said this in my full-time reaction on reflection. I feel the gaffer might have got this one wrong. Um, I, I still don't think he's particularly sure what his best combo is on those wings. And, OK, I understand that he plays uh, what more, more often when he's going for it. And he might play longer when he's being a little bit more defensive. But for me, as exciting as what more can be, he gets his head down, he doesn't look up. And... He's sort of playing on the wrong wing. He's left-footed and, and he, he, he always goes on the outside. He's not like Longman who cuts in, you know, from the left onto his right foot. And I felt that, you know, to feed over Femi, the best chance we got of doing that is to get crosses in from out wide. And I think it proved that when Longman came on and when Mayer come on, they're both players that will try and nick a yard and deliver a ball from wide. Um, and what more doesn't do that? He runs with his head up his arse sometimes. A prime example is the one at the start of the second half where... He gets his head down, he runs past the defender and he, he just slices it off the outside of his left foot. Doesn't get his head up, doesn't try and cut back inside. Uh, Danny Mack coming on and getting beyond him helped him a little bit. But yeah, I feel that the gaffer could have got that one wrong. But look, it's going to happen. It's a bad day at the office. And I think myself, well, I did predict to win. And a lot of us went into that game uh, expecting a win. It's probably one of the few games, if the only game since Neil Harris has come back, that we've gone, yeah, we're going to win this game. Three points. And you can't really blame us. Rotherham have only won four games all season. They haven't scored in their last five. They have got one point out of their last five. That was a draw against Huddersfield. And Huddersfield played the majority of that game with 10 men. And, and they're pretty much relegated. We could have condemned them back to League One in that game on Monday. But that wasn't to be. And we lost the game. But I, on reflection, look, this is what we know about us as a, as a club. So I'm not sure why myself... And so many of us thought it was a given that we was gonna we was gonna win this game. I don't really feel that the players felt it was a given. Teams come at us like West Brom, you know, like Leeds, like teams we've beaten under Neil Harris since he's been back. And we know that technically, you know, they've got better players than us, more expensive players than us. And the best way to to draw them in and suck them into us trying to win the game is, is to get them into a physical battle and to upset their flow and to upset um, their process of how they want to play and draw them into a battle, frustrate them, and then sort of overpower them, if you like, sort of out, out near wall them. And if we can drag teams into that battle, that's exactly usually what happens. And that's why New Harris has got so many big clubs and Premier League scouts under his belt as Millwall manager. Teams like Rotherham, we saw it when we was in League One under Neil Harris. There's a game against Chesterfield in midweek that's sticking out of my memory. I'm not sure why, but we drew nil-nil. And there was a few that season we went up because we're being team sit against us. We can't break them down because we haven't really got the ideas. It's not really our game, especially without a big striker up top. So we, yes, sort of didn't drop to their level because they beat us. We can't, you know, we can't insult them. They, they won the game fair and square, although we should have won the game. And Neil Harris said afterwards, he has no idea how we didn't win this game. And, and I agree with him. But on reflection, I mean, the goalkeeper's got man of the match. I've watched the extended highlights back. We had the chances. It's just a, a really, you know, I don't want to blame Sarkic completely because he's, he's one player out of 11 and, and he's not the manager either. But 
for me, you know, their goalkeeper made the saves he needed to make and our goalkeeper didn't. Uh, we should have been out of sight. The first half was a, a terrible advert for championship football. Two sides that aren't very good at knocking the ball about. We couldn't get into our rhythm. Although we did have the only two chances of the half. The first one, as we know, Zion Fleming scored there uh, last season. Was it last season or the season before? Uh, a brilliant goal. He got our goal of the season in the yellow kit. And he does, from a similar position, the same sort of thing. Denor does well, tees him up, and he hits that right-footed curl. The goalkeeper would have been unsighted. And he gets across, he moves his feet, he projects himself, and he makes a brilliant save to tip it round the post. Not long after that, we started to get on top a bit. And there's a, there's a diag into the box where, in real time, obviously, we're up the other end. Cooper's header doesn't miss the top corner by much, but I do feel that Cooper probably should have done, could have done a little bit better. It might be harsh, that one, because the defender was sort of backing into him all over him. And Cooper's header just misses the top corner. So we get to half time and people are you know, all chatting around me and saying, what do we think is going to happen? And I said, look, he'll rile them up at half time because they're going to be shooting towards us. He won't be happy with that first half performance. And then they'll come out and give it a go in the second half. And then that's exactly what happened. You couldn't see anything other than a mill win. The second half starts. We're getting at them. We're getting numbers you know, into the box. We're overloading them and, and getting balls in from out wide. We force a corner through Danny Max cross the deflects. And it's the first save in the second half, but the second good save in the game where it comes across. Again, it's from Zian Fleming. He's header and the goalkeeper tips it out over the bar from just underneath the centre of the goal. You'd expect him to save that, yes, but he's still a good save. Fleming's now hit the target twice in the game and he's been met by two good saves from the keeper. The one for me that's a glaring miss and it could have changed the face of the game because I felt if we took the lead, they wouldn't have come back into it. And again, I'm not blaming individuals. Tanganga's improving all the time. But that one, it, yes, it's a good save. He gets free from the corner. He scored a lot of important goals from us. So as I said, I'm not criticising him, but he knew because he held his head in his hands. He doesn't get a clean connection on it. He's about four yards out in the centre of the goal. And he's only just got... If he, That should be powering past the keeper before the keeper's had an opportunity to see it. But he doesn't sort of get over it properly. It bubbles towards goal. The keeper, yes, again, it's a good save. And he gets across... Um, and, and he scoops it off the line. It didn't go over the line. I saw on the extended highlights, they had Hawkeye. Uh, I could see from where I was sitting, it wasn't over line. But for me, that was the one that, that, that could have shaped the second half. And I think we would have gone on to win the game comfortably. Uh, you know, we say during games, we don't have enough shots. We don't have enough efforts on target. Their keepers got mad in the match, as I've already said. And we've had plenty of efforts on target. But just when you think that it's only a matter of time now, oh, to be honest, I was thinking... When over Femi missed these one, I should be on to a minute. It's not going to happen for us. Before that, though, they go up the other end and they open the scoring. Uh, it's a shot from the edge of the box. A lot's had to happen before it gets to Sarkic. But for me, he's standing where he's standing. He's in the middle of the he's in the middle of the goal by the time the guy shoots, and it doesn't go far to his right. But his start position's all wrong. If you can watch the extended highlights, uh, watch them because it shows an angle from behind the goal, and it may have seemed harsh what I said. You know, without seeing that replay, it was Sarkic's fault. But I saw it um, on the screen in the stadium as well. So that's how I knew. Um, his start position's all wrong. As I said, he's on the post. The guy curls one from him uh, wide on the angle. Was he unsighted? Potentially, was he anticipating that someone might get a touch on it? I don't, I'm trying to find excuses for him because he has improved. But I have said many times it will come to a point where he will cost us. And yes, we missed chances to this point. But look how much they've been able... To, to rely on their goalkeeper to keep them in the game. And the shot bounces in front of him. It doesn't go right in the corner. He just, he just doesn't dive properly. He doesn't move his feet. He doesn't move his body. It's, it's a long way out, and he's got a lot of time to, to assess what's going to happen there. And we go one nil down after that. So we come up the other end, long throw into the box, um, the flick on, and then over Femi, how he doesn't score that, I don't know. But again, on reflection, it's an unbelievable save. The goalkeeper... Doesn't know a lot about it, but as a goalkeeper, what you can do is dive and spread yourself and, and they get a bit of luck, but it's a fantastic save. Comes off his shoulder, Omafemi misses from a yard out and then from the resulting corner, just when you think it's not going to be our day, ball comes in, uh, misses a few people out. I think Tanganga keeps it alive and it's very, very scrappy. Cooper takes a swipe at it. I think he hits Norton Cuffey and then Longman's there to stab home for his second goal of the season. Of course, his only other goal of the season was the absolute fucking world he scored at the den against Rotherham in a 3-0 win back right at the start of the season in midweek. So at that point, you go, okay, 
I thought we're either not going to score here and we could play till fucking next Monday and not score, or we score one, we'll score a couple. So we get that goal. I think, okay, here we go. This is it now. And we often we puffed after that without finding any end products. Subs came on. Um, but the sucker punch it is the goal four minutes from time. They've had, but they've had one shot in the game and one cross. I suppose you could count that the guy's got a touch in it. But again, I hate, I don't want to keep saying it. And you may think I'm, it's a fucking witch hunt, but it isn't. From what I've seen, in my opinion, it's come in from a long, long way out. And I've watched it back on, on the extended highlights time and time again. It's come in, and I've, the only excuse I can give Sarkic is he's waiting to see if the guy gets a touch on it and it, the ball might change direction, which it does. But from the point when it's left the guy's foot to the point it's the back of the net, he's standing pretty much in the same spot. He hasn't really moved. And again, he just sort of sinks to one knee. At that point, as soon as contact's made, you've got to anticipate where the ball's going and, and project yourself and dive full length. And if he does that, I think he saves the ball. But look, he didn't. We lost the game. Um, and and I'm, I'm seriously considering not going Huddersfield on Saturday because all I can think of is times I've gone up north recently and I just keep seeing us lose. So I'm starting to think that, you know, I am superstitious at times, especially with things like this. I've seen us recently lose away at Leeds, Hull, uh, Rotherham, I'm sure there's others in there, but yeah, it's just, it's a bad, bad day at the office for Neil Harris. It's the first bad day at the office he's had. However, teams around us, some of them won, yes, QPR, Blackburn and that, they've gone above us, but obviously other teams have been sucked further back in. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday lost, uh, Plymouth lost. So we just got to wipe the slate clean. In my opinion, we've got to reset and we just got to say, right, that's a bad day at the office. Let's now use that and take that disappointment, that frustration, because I heard the gaffer went off his fucking tits after the game, um, and rightly so. Let's now use that as motivation to put it all into Huddersfield. And, you know, if anything, that's our cup final. Let's move on to Saturday's game. As I've already mentioned, we're playing Huddersfield Town at the John Smith Stadium. Managed by Andre Brighton Retta. I've literally just cut the camera to look that up, and I have no idea who that guy is. I didn't even know he's their manager. I know they had uh, Darren Moore in at one point. I they're a little bit club still trying to recover from the summit and the heights of getting to the Premier League a couple of seasons ago, but they are lingering in and around the bottom of the table as well. What would the gaffer do uh, from our side? I think that... I don't know what to think. I mean, look, he's got to play over Femi up front, and he's just, he's just not scoring, is he? And he's actually getting chances as well. We have one against West Brom which he should have scored. He had one from a fucking yard out against Rotherham, albeit a great save. He should have scored. But I think the best way to try and help him out over Femi is to get these players wide and get balls into the box. I think Danny Mack will play left back because uh, we've got no Joe Bryan and we've got no Murray Wallace now. By the look of it, Murray Wallace limps off in the Rotherham game. Will he bring back in Mitchell for uh, Denor? I thought Denor played quite well in the game. I'm still not with all you lot. I still don't think he's a Ballon d'Or contender, but I do think he played well in the game. And I just feel that he can, he nearly did it in the second half. Those little balls that I always talk about in between centre backs and full backs along the floor, slide rule passes, they used to call them on Championship Manager, if you ever played it back in the 90s. Uh, that, that's how we're best to feed over Femi because he is a little bit running around, he's head up his ass like a headless chicken, but it's not really his fault. He's, you know, he's trying to do the best in a team and, and a structure that he's, he doesn't, doesn't benefit him. He's not used to playing in those sorts of sides, having to do a lot of running and a lot of getting out wide and trying to win balls in the air, which he's never going to win. So for me, I'd leave the Nor in. I would leave the Nor in, but I'm not sure whether, I mean, Savile, yes, I'd leave him as well. I'm not really sure what's best to do, to be honest, but I definitely, I like the look of Mayo when he come on and I like the look of Longman because uh, what they'll try and do, they'll try and nick a yard and they'll try and get balls into the box, which is already said the best way, in my opinion, to feed over Fleming. We need a little bit more from Fleming, although he was unlucky with his two, two chances. One good save from the goalkeeper from the Rotherham Cat against them. One fantastic save. But we need to try and, and go for this game. But as we know, it's not always to our benefit when we try and attack teams. However, Huddersfield, uh, a much bigger fan base, their stadium will be pretty much full. And I think that, especially bearing in mind previous trips we've had up there, which is, I think, back-to-back, one-nil losses the last two seasons, I think they'll come at us. 
which I think will benefit us. Um, I think he'll play Honeyman. I think he might play Honeyman and Longman. Yeah, that's that's the changes I think he'll definitely make. Um, but look, let's have a look how they've been getting on because, as I've said, Huddersfield Town are also struggling. They have no wins out of their previous five league games, drawing two and losing three. Last time out was on the road against Stoke City where they was 1-0 up in that game. How does that make them look in terms of league table where they currently occupy the highest relegation position? They are four points behind us, although we have a superior goal difference of six. If we was to beat Huddersfield on Saturday and Sheffield Wednesday don't get a result at QPR, then I feel seven points plus that superior goal difference could be enough to see us save it is like a cup final. Let's move on to a prediction. And so this is your pre-match prediction. And here we go. You may notice I slowed down there because I'm still, if I'm honest, not sure how I feel this one's going to pan out on Saturday. I had a long think about it earlier on in a lovely long hot bath and I still can't make my mind up. If anyone can roll the troops up and say, look what fucking happened on Monday, 900 of them travelled up and fucking made a lot of noise on a bank holiday uh, to see that, to get served that shit, um, which it was shit. Look, I, I still feel that you know, we've done enough to win the game, barring their goalkeeper. But we didn't, and, and conceding the way we did, you know, it wasn't fantastic. Bad defending as well, by the way, for the second goal, which I didn't mention. But look, if anyone could roll him up and say, now you use that and, and you, you channel it and you fucking go out there and you give these fans what they deserve. Because if we do win at Huddersfield, as I said, it's almost like a cup final, in my opinion, and it should see us safe. However, our track record up there is not good. I went two years ago, and we lost 1-0, and I, I drove up there and back in one day, and I was fuming. Uh, the closest we got to scoring a goal was when Scott Malone missed one in the warm-up and nearly took my little boy's head off and broke the seat behind him. Um, we didn't have a shot in the game. The next year, I said, I'm absolutely not going, which was last year. Last year, I refused to go. Uh, the Omaras went, and exactly the same thing happened. So confidence maybe a little bit hit after that Rotherham game. I'm not sure, but the gaffer's got to rile them up. I've delayed this. For long enough, I'm going to go for a 1-1 one, one draw and I'm going to go for Casper de Ballon d'Or to get his first ever goal for the club. How about that? And then some of you might even rate him even higher than you already do. 1-1 one, one is a point I take considering other fixtures that are going on. So let's move on to it. This is six to go. Okay, so if you've not watched our nine to go, eight to go, I don't think we did a seven to go because we didn't have time in between the West Brom game and the Rotherham game. This is how it works. This is six to go. Six games left to go in our season. However, I've already given you the meal content. So we're going to look at the fixtures that remain um, for this coming Saturday. And we're going to look at the league table. And I'm going to give you my predictions. And uh, feel free to give your predictions as well. If you can guess how many predictions I get right from all the fixtures, and it's just win, lose, or draw, home, away, or draw, um, and you're a member then put it in the comments below and I'll do a giveaway for the members. I completely fucked up last week. I'm not going to lie because I said, how many do you think I'll get right out of 10? And I should have said 11. I actually should have said 12 because by the time these videos go out, our results in. So it's all championship fixtures. How many do you think I will get right once I've given you uh, my predictions, which I'm going to do right now? 12 championship fixtures this coming weekend the first is on friday it's rotherham against plymouth if you don't know plymouth sacked their manager during the week my mate said to me why have they done that with six games to go because they want that new manager bounce if they can get it like we got and we're now no wins in three by the way which um all right two difficult games against leeds and west brom you would have expected but I, I was expecting three points against rotherham and it didn't happen now the tables turn and we want rotherham to try and do a job against plymouth joe o'mara said to me yesterday as well Oh, my God, now they're going to get uh, Neil Warnock in to get him to the end of the season. And Warnock always does the business against us. I've just seen online this morning that they haven't given it to Neil Warnock. They've given it to the director of football and the assistant. And Warnock has said, I would have gone back. So I'm pleased Warnock hasn't gone back to Plymouth. They are manager less, if you like, and they've left the assistant in charge until the end of the season. They play Rotherham away on Friday night. So as I've said, it now flips and we want Rotherham 
to win this game. Let's move on to these predictions. Starting with the Rotherham game. Okay, Rotherham versus Plymouth. I am going to go for a draw. Norwich v Ipswich, big one that, and Ipswich are flying, of course. I'm going to go for an Ipswich win on that one. Blackburn against Southampton. Blackburn for me shouldn't even be down where they are. Um, Sammy Spodich is definitely going to get a move in the summer. He scored two in the five one route of Sunderland Stadium of Light. Let's see them go above us. Uh, I'm going to go for a draw on that one as well. This is good for us. Leicester versus Birmingham. I'm going to go for a home win. Leicester got back on track with a win against Norwich last time out. Middlesbrough v Swansea. I still feel Swansea ain't a million percent safe. I'm going to go for a Middlesbrough win on that one. Huddersfield v Millwall, as you know, I've already predicted a 1-1. One, one. Watford v Preston. Watford improving. Preston did improve in that. They slipped up last couple of times, I think. So I'm going to go for a draw on that one as well. Stoke versus West Brom. I'm going to go for an away win. That is hope more than think. So, yeah, I'm going to go for a West Brom win on that one. Coventry v Leeds. I'm going to go for a Leeds win. Cardiff v Hull City. This one makes absolutely no difference to our life. Um, but I will go for a draw on that one. Sunderland versus Bristol City. I'm going to go for another draw on that one. And QPR against Sheffield Wednesday. I said it's so strange at this time of the season. Rotherham beat us. Now we want Rotherham to win again and beat Plymouth. And also QPR. We've been looking over our shoulders all season at them. Now they're above us along with Blackburn. We now want QPR to beat Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday. Because, as I said, if they do or they even get a point and we do manage to beat Huddersfield, then um, th then we should should be safe. We've still got some teams to play in around us, like Plymouth, like Swansea. Um, and we've got some difficult games as well, including, I think, Tuesday at home against Leicester. But look, they're the fixtures for this weekend. There's my predictions for them. As I've already mentioned, if you're a member of the channel... Predict how many you think I'll get right out of that. Put it in the comments below and I'll pick one winner out uh, and we'll, we'll do a giveaway for that. I hope I'm right on some of those. I hope I'm wrong on the middle one. I hope we get three points. But if you want to become a member and you're not already, then you can become so by clicking the link in the description below. So, yeah, one final look at the league table there. As you know, I don't like to bother looking above. All I'm doing now is looking below. Birmingham away to Leicester. That's going to be very, very difficult for them. Plymouth away at Rotherham. That's winnable for them. That's winnable and they may go, you know, with a new manager bounce. It may be exactly why they did it when they did it. We're playing Huddersfield and Sheffield Wednesday are away to QPR. As I've already mentioned, we've got not a bad goal difference. Plymouth's is better than ours, but Birmingham's is slightly worse than Huddersfield and Sheffield Wednesday's is way worse than ours. So if it comes to the crunch, which I hope it doesn't, I would say that's probably worth an extra point on the league table. But honestly, I thought, I thought well, look, if we had have won against Rotherham, we'd have been pretty much there, wouldn't we? But look, let's wipe the slate clean. It's happened. What's happened's happened, and we can't change it. I actually predicted um, before these next three games that we would draw 1-1 with West Brom, which we did. I predicted we'd beat Rotherham, and I predicted that we'd lose to Huddersfield. So now... I feel the only reason we now may beat Huddersfield is because we lost to Rotherham. And as I said, Neil Harris will rile up the troops. I'm still not sure if I'm going to Huddersfield on Saturday. I didn't get back from Rotherham until five o'clock yesterday and, and I was shattered. So um, I don't know. I can book a hotel and get a ticket last minute if I need to. So I may well do that. If I am travelling, then you'll get the content. If I'm not travelling, then of course I'll be streaming Live and direct from Lions TV Towers to call you home for the 90 minutes and more. And tomorrow, I'm going to try and stream the under 18. So keep your eyes out again on the socials for that one. I hope you've enjoyed this show. As I said, it's been a long one. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.